Hey guys, Teresa Barber with Sippy Couture. Welcome to my channel and thanks so much for watching. Today I'm going to show you how I made this sunset beach tumbler. Um, it just comes out so pretty and subtle with these waves. Um, do me a favor and subscribe to this channel. We're, when we hit 10,000 subscribers, we're going to do a big giveaway. We have a um, Cricut Explorer Air 2 in there, some tumblers, a turner, glitters, gift cards from um, some just super amazing companies that were able to donate those. So please subscribe and head on over to our um, Sippy Couture community Facebook group. That's where you can actually go like that post and be registered to win. Um, and I think that's it, guys. As always, let me know if you have any questions and I hope you find this helpful and I will see y'all soon. All right, we're gonna ignore all this overspray and get right to it. Um, we are going to do just a little base paint that way we have something for all of our stuff to adhere to. Um, I'm gonna do white towards the top and then a little strip of gold towards the bottom. That way I kind of have a visual for where I need these glitters to go um, for my gold whenever I'm dropping my colors. Um, kind of helps. We're gonna ombre this whole thing that we know we're doing. This right here doesn't have to be completely white, but since we're doing um, kind of almost pastel type colors, we want it to be somewhat wide enough, that way we don't see um, any of the tumbler on there. Um, this is gonna have a few layers, so if you paint it to little runny spots, it's not a big deal. Um, just make sure that we have it white with our nice gold strip at the bottom, um, just for reference of, like I said, where we want these paints to go. We're gonna get the ombres on here done in kind of that same method as I always use for my ombre uh, base paint for tumblers. I have a pink blush right here. It was super light. Um, it was like a blush pearl. It was really pretty, but it was so light that it wouldn't give me enough color. So I added just a dab of pink in here um, into this mix to kind of brighten it up. So we're gonna start with that. Get that on the top. This is just a base. Um, this is just a base so that our tumblers, um, not tumblers, so that our glitters will have a bit more um, pop behind them. It won't be kind of so flat under um, over a white spray paint. I always feel like having the same color on there gives it a bit of depth and a ton of forgiveness. That way, if your ombre isn't perfect, um, the base paint, uh, it kind of can give some forgiveness to it. So like I said, this is gonna be light. Um, it's more of like a pastel type look to it. So we don't want it to go too, too crazy. Next, we're gonna drop in a little bit of yellow. Actually, you know what, let me get some white in here. Let me get some white in here first. That way, my transition from pink I'm one. I don't want to go. Come on. There we go. That way my transition from pink to yellow won't turn so orange. Um, the white will give it a little bit of separation of color. And I'm just putting that right on this bottom line. Just working this white in right where the pink ends. I'm not gonna pull it up into that pink anymore. It's just right into where that pink ends. That way it softens it down a bit. Then we'll go ahead and drop our yellow on. I didn't have any of these ready, guys. Let's do this. This is just a really good light yellow. Not a ton of color to this. it from that other side. I don't want to add more because I really don't want it to be super punchy in color. All right, work it into this white right here. That way it kind of fades. And it will kind of soften that transition from the white into this yellow. And then from there, you can work it into that pink. And that will give you a really soft pink to yellow sunset. We'll switch paint paintbrushes for this one. And we're going to do a little more white between the yellow and where this blue is going to go. Because I do not want this blue to go green. Add in a little more. Once it gets around, work it from both sides. And 
Now I'm going to get this blue. Tell you what. All my pants are all my pants are just struggling on me today. And this is just a little paint. Like you can tell there's barely any paint on here, but it's just enough to get a little bit of that color. The glitters that we're using are um aren't super super opaque which is a really good thing especially for a, kind of that soft sunset look all right get that in here now that it has kind of a blue tint i'll start working it up towards a white let's get a little more blue And then the white right here is dry. Um, it just dried so, so fast, which is fine. We're just gonna get a little more white to add in to kind of get, make it stretch a little more. And what that will do, if there's any paints right there that are still kind of wet, we'll pull it up and mix it in with that white that we just put down. And that will give us a little more room to spread this. go down through this blue like I said this ombre does not have to be perfect because it is going to have layers of paint um, and micas and everything over the glitters it's gonna be really pretty and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and soften up this line where this pink is See one spot right here that looks a little harsh. There we go. And now we have this super, super pretty soft ombre of pink, yellow, blue down into the gold. And this will give us the perfect guide on how to drop these glitters. Just a little piece of paint right there. I want to get up. The white that I'm using, I don't know if I said that, the white that I'm using is um, a really, really pretty shimmer to it. It is a metallic white. All right, so we're going to let this dry and then we'll be on here right away with epoxy and um and the glitters that we're using it's a whole new lineup that i have for mr Nola's glitter um some that i pulled just for this sunset i'm working on the mix um for this top part because a few of these are discontinued or special retreat glitter so i'm working on the mix for this for you guys but um we'll run through what everything is and um it comes out really pretty time to go on with our epoxy we don't need a lot for this step this is just enough to get our glitters to adhere to the tumbler we definitely do not want them to um, kind of pool in places or uh, slide around anywhere. We want them to stay put, stay exactly where we dropped them. So this is just enough to do epoxy method. Um, as far as the MLs on this, I'm really not sure. Um, I set a few tumblers with speed dry, and this is just what I had left over in the bucket. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if it was less than five. Um, it has to be less than five. It's, I wouldn't be surprised if it was less than two. <laughs> it is barely any. So we're gonna go ahead, use our heat gun. And we're just gonna press onto the tumbler and spread out this epoxy. We definitely wanna make sure we get everywhere on this tumbler. So don't rush this step, just make sure you smooth it out. Remember that introducing any type of heat to your epoxy, um, especially the speed dry, can kind of speed up that time that it takes to cure. And it will kind of get it hot, so be careful. Some of this gold spray paint is um, coming up. I should have just gone across this way with that gold to make sure it doesn't travel up. You still won't be able to see it. Like throughout all the stuff that we're gonna do with epoxy, we won't be able to see it, so I'm not worried about it. And then any place that I have little streaks throughout here, 
like this right here. I don't know if you can see that. I take the palm of my glove, um, pull palm of my hand, pull your glove tight and just tap it on your tumbler. What this will do is it'll kind of give your epoxy almost like this matted type texture look to it. And it's a lot easier to smooth out these lines with it kind of coming off of this matte effect rather than deep um, kind of lines throughout your epoxy. So let this go for a minute, let it all even out. Make sure I didn't miss any spots. And then we'll be back with glitter. I always like to start at the bottom with my, um, with my sand color. That way I know how much room I have whenever I'm doing my ombre. It kind of helps me know where to stop laying my colors. So this is a little wheezy, little wheezy. <laughs> got messed up on that one this one's a little easy it's really really pretty it's like a gold opal um it's really really fun so we're gonna put that on and it gives off so much bling um it's just pretty it's so pretty so we have that down i'm gonna grab egret next egret is in the zodiac collection so if you search egret and you can't quite find it Type in Zodiac and you'll see it. It's one of the, um, the ones in there and it is gorgeous. Anytime I do any type of mix, like a custom mix, I need it to have a little opal. I add egret in there and it just does so much to give it color. It's really pretty. Drop that right on that line. Knock that off and put it back in. And then we're gonna start from the top. The top mix is, like I said, it's that one that um, I need to figure out. We're going to go across the top. We're going to go across. A bigger shaker. Across the top, you want to put a lot of color right there. I'm not using these tiny baby shakers. There we go, let's do it this way. All right, put that pretty heavy along the top. Make sure you get this top section really, really good. Keep it even if possible. And then once you know you got this color on all the way around, we're going to turn our shaker on an angle and we're gonna drop it this way, whoa, this way. And that's gonna help bring that color down and ombre into the rest of them. So have that, just a consistent shake. The higher you hold it, the further these colors are gonna fan out. So you can really customize how far down you want this ombre to go based on the distance between this shaker and your tumbler. All right, we have that down. Knock off the extra. Keep this, the next color is Primo Creole Creamery, man, I can't speak today. Creole Creamery, that is in the Scoops collection. Um, gorgeous, really, really, really gorgeous, almost peachy color. And I'm gonna go across sideways, as always, go across sideways to kind of give myself a guide of where this color is gonna be. Keep it in a line fairly close to the cup compared to how I drop the colors when I um, turn it sideways. So all the way around there. I'm gonna turn this on an angle and I want my colors to hit from here to down a little. So we're going across again like this, diagonal like that. Pull up a little so you get a bigger fan of colors. And this will help fill in some of those gaps in that, um, in the pink color we dropped. I'm not gonna lie, this one's a little tough to shake out without it completely going everywhere. It's such a fine glitter. This one is really, really good to do tacket method, especially when you put these over black. Oh my goodness. All right, knock that off. We're gonna go with Press Street Station. Um, that Press Street Station is really, really pretty blue. But one of the things about it is that it, um, 
it pulls in other colors too. So even though we're dropping it kind of on the blue section, whenever we move it up, it's gonna play in, pull off and kind of play in with those um, oranges and pinks above there. So go sideways, fill in that section. is in the way and then we do the same thing turn it sideways and sprinkle it all through the top we're bringing this color up pretty good because we want it to tie in um, like I said it's blue but it ties in with some of those other colors and it really plays together with it so bring that up a smaller side of egret fill in right here and I know that we always we already put this right here but sometimes um, depending on how much epoxy you have that color will soak into the epoxy that glitter will and you'll still be able to kind of attach more to it um, as it kind of soaks it in so I always like to kind of touch it up again that way if it soaks it in and any of the blues that soak in will help to fill in spots And then I'm gonna go back again with Creole Creamery. And I'm using this to help fill in any gaps through here. So now we're gonna go super generous. Go all the way around. And really do what we can to get that, um, I need a bigger paper, to get that in there as much as possible. This color is just gorgeous. some fall off and that gives just a pretty shine to everywhere I'm gonna put this back and then I'm gonna bring this paper back under it and I'll tap it off the reason why I do that is that if any other colors fall off in here I won't contaminate this Creole cre Creole creamery so tap just a little and not really anything has fallen off which is good because that means that this peach really did its job to get stuck into some of those colors, which is exactly what we wanted. All right, so now the parchment paper. And I just take a little bit of it, and I am not gonna flatten down all of this glitter. I'm just gonna focus on the chunky bits that are through here. I don't wanna have to fight with a sand color later on to lay flat. So any chunky bits that I see sticking up, I'm just gonna kinda push them down, encourage them to lay down. Like I said, we use speed dry epoxy, so we won't need a ton of time to get this to set um, a few hours, and then we need to spray it really good with clear before we put any epoxy on. We wanna make sure that everything we did stays still. So let this spin your time, um, two to three hours, more if you want, but make sure it sets before we go on with spray paint, with clear spray paint. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and spray it with clear spray paint. Um, it doesn't matter if you use gloss or matte. Um, what does matter is how aggressive you are with your spray paint. So what we're gonna wanna do, if you blast this really hard, some of the fine bits of glitter are gonna go flying. And we kind of worked hard for this ombre, so we're not, we don't wanna mess this up. So what we'll do is we'll do just clear bursts of spray paint. And it's just enough to get it all set in place. Um, that way, whenever we do go with a little more in a minute, that we won't have glitter flying all over the place. So then I'll get around here, get around this point. And now that I know that I kind of have it all sprayed, I'm going to go a little more aggressive at this point. I have a piece of blue. There's a piece of um, navy blue glitter in there. Where is it? Right here. I don't know if you can see it. Um, we'll pick that out. It's pretty close to the top, so I'll just get... Um, my weeding tool and just flick that away because it's one spot that's gonna annoy you. So then we're gonna just take our clear and go around to really get it to spray. 
Now that is a good bit of spray paint, but I don't want this moving around. It has to be still. Um, so we're gonna let this sit for a bit, let it dry completely before we go on with epoxy. We're gonna go ahead and get this epoxy on here. The spray paint is completely dry. Again, this is Mr. Nola's glass, um, not glass coat, speed dry epoxy. And I use this for um, every single step. It does have the UV inhibitors that's needed for it to be used as a final coat to um, kind of fight that yellowing that a lot of fast setting epoxies um, don't have. So it's absolutely perfect for every layer. For this, it doesn't have to be completely thick for this coat right here. We just want it all sealed up. That way, whenever we get to our next step where we get to add waves and movement to this, we won't have any of this glitter floating around. Um, some people do put go on right away with their inks. But um, like I said, one of my other beach tumblers, uh, I'm aggressive and I find that I kind of dig into the glitter at times and I would just rather make sure everything is set and nothing's gonna move around on me. So we're gonna continue to get this on. I have my torch, run that through to pop any bubbles. And I forgot to pick out that piece of glitter. I see it right here. Oh no. All right, well, I will get my little tool and try to get that out. But um, but that's it, hit it with your torch, pop any bubbles, let this sit, and then when this is cured, we'll come back with um, the top layers of kind of um, inks and micas to give it some movement. I trimmed off the bottom of this, that way it wouldn't be too much kind of built up around here for when it's time to, um, to actually clean that up. It makes it a lot easier if you do it trim off that bottom the, um, right after this epoxy step. So um, what we're gonna do is spread a little bit of epoxy on here, and this will give the dye that I'm gonna add in here and the waves kind of something to move around on. It doesn't have to be a ton of epoxy, you just wanna get something decent down for them to slide around. The more epoxy you have, the more movement you'll have on all of these waves. And I know for a fact I have too much speed dry mixed up right here, but I always would rather have um, more epoxy than not enough, especially whenever you're adding dyes. I mean, you don't have to stop in between stuff. All right, let me spread this out. Make sure I have this everywhere. And then we're gonna go ahead and add our epoxy, our dye into our epoxy. And I'm sorry I don't have this set up for you guys. Um, I feel like it's easier to just show you how much of everything we do. So you don't need a lot. Um, this epoxy dye, a little goes a long way. So we're gonna put a little drop, two little, two little drops, and then mix this in. Now the waves that I do for this is a lot different and a lot more subtle than I do waves for my other beach tumblers. I just like when this little one comes out, um, this little one, <laughs> this uh, soft little pastel sunset really comes out light and pretty. If you wanted brighter, whiter waves and add a little more dye, but I really like for them to be soft. So I'm going to start at the bottom so I kind of know once again where I'm going. And I am kind of um, digging this popsicle stick in just a little to help spread this out. I don't want a ton of epoxy here. I don't want to cover up all that glitter. So it helps to be able to move this epoxy around just by scraping at it and lifting it rather than having to keep adding more to waves. Because um, the worst thing is when you have too much and then you, um, you kind of cover up all the work on the glitters that you did. So we're gonna spread this out. We're not gonna do the gold like we did on the other one because I don't wanna cover this up. Like I said, it's still gonna be super light, but get that on. And then we're going to just drizzle it along the tumbler. If you're not happy with how your ombre fell in some sections, then use this opportunity, like right here, use this opportunity to get that white down on here and use that to help mask some of those areas where the ombre didn't fall like you would like. And you wouldn't even be able to tell. Like you're just, um, you can kind of play with it and cover it up with this. So like I said, not a lot in here. What I'm gonna do is from when I dropped my epoxy, I wanna make sure that there aren't any kind of big blobs in here of this white. So any place that there is, I'm going to turn my popsicle sideways, lift it up and just relocate it. Just push it somewhere else. I'm going to do the same thing all through here. 
this stuff can be changed. If you don't want to do a lot of waves, you definitely don't have to. If you want to do a little more and um, deeper colors, you can go ahead and do that. But this is all just making it how you want at this point. And I don't want any more white than this. This is a ton. This is a ton of white on here. Um, and by the time it starts to spread out and hit it with the heat just a little, um, I don't want it to cover up all the glitter. I'm going to make sure I get some right along that top though. If you wanted to give this a little more depth, then you can definitely throw a little mica um, of these same colors into your epoxy and give it um, a bit more color and movement on top. But like I said, I want this to say, stay soft. Man, I can't speak today. I can't speak and I can't type. I was texting earlier and I had, I don't know, like a million typos. I just couldn't, <laughs> couldn't do it. All right, we're gonna hit this with a torch. Kind of encourage these to um, soften out just a little. Oop, a little too close on that one. And what I'm also going to do is really pay attention to some of these parts. Once again, that has a lot of white and kind of scoop those and move them around. I'm going with my torch at this point. That way I can pop bubbles and get this to move. Um, your heat gun is really what you want if you want to move inks um, and micas and stuff around, move epoxy around. You want your heat gun for that. But I also want to make sure that I don't have any bubbles in this. So, and I don't need a ton of movement. So that's one reason why I'm not grabbing my heat gun for this, why I'm just grabbing my torch. Because I can help um, kind of close in some of these spots from where I dug that popsicle in and kind of move these at the same time. What you can also do is if you don't like some of the spots that you put down, at this point, you can use your popsicle stick or even one of those silicone tools and just remove that epoxy altogether. I have one blob right here that I don't love right there. Spread that out. And that's it for this step. We have these white waves. It plays off where that um, where that ombre went that I didn't completely love. It gives a lot of character. Got that bubble, big old bubble right there. Um, and it gives it a lot of like fun wave character with that little sunset. Um, it could be clouds, could be waves, you know, kind of whatever you see in this. Um, but that's pretty much it. Time to get this final coat on here. I went ahead and did a light sand and then I applied my decal. Um, and it was just a basic decal, so I didn't video that for you guys. And I don't know the name of the font off the top of my head. It's a new font. It starts with two A's, and I know that I don't know how to pronounce it. So I will make sure I um, post that in the comments. And um, I'll also try to figure out where I got it from and show you that too. But this really did come out with just a soft, simple... Um, layer of waves on it which is exactly what i was looking for um it just came out perfect and then the name just a super thin font we wanted to do an opal on this to kind of keep with the theme of it being really soft so um I, that's what we went with the one of those opal vinyls from tech wrap i have this epoxy on i'm going to use my heat gun to help spread it i always like to go fairly thin with the layers whenever i'm doing these final coats that way i make sure um, that I don't get any bubbles over the epoxy, um, any micro, not epoxy, goodness, that I don't get any of those bubbles over the decal. Whenever you're using um, a holographic vinyl or even metallic, um, those really, really show flaws. So if you have a really thick layer over there and the bubbles, any type of micro bubbles decide to settle, it's gonna show in those layers right over the decal. So I always get my epoxy on here, I move it around a bit, and working with this epoxy, it loves heat. Like I said, this is speed dry. It absolutely loves heat and it loves being worked around your tumbler. So I find that a lot of times, the more times I put heat with it and spread it around this way, the less bubbles that I get. Um, and like I said, it was just a tiny amount that I used in here. So we have that worked around. Let me grab my torch. I'll pop the bubbles. Definitely make sure that I don't have any on top of this decal. I'm doing what I can to make sure the top part of this is sealed as well as the bottom and then that's going to be it guys um i really hope you enjoy this i hope it helped you so please subscribe to this channel like i said when we get to 10,000 views uh, 10,000 subscribers we're going to do a giveaway in that giveaway i have a cricket explorer air 2 i have epoxy some dino's tumblers i'm um, sorry dino's turners i will have some tumblers in there um haven't quite decided which brand i'll be doing it but there'll definitely be some tumblers in there. 
um, glitters. I don't know if I said epoxy. Two Moms Craft Shack is donating a gift card as well as um, MJT Collective. And I'm just super excited about this. Like the fact that 10,000 is a possibility is just insane. So please subscribe to this channel. Head on over to Sippy Couture Community Facebook group where we have a few more giveaways going on in there. Um, I hope you guys have a good week or weekend whenever you're watching this. Hope you um, enjoyed this tutorial and it helped. As always, let me know if you have any questions and I will see y'all soon. Bye guys.